Hi, I'm Mike Wong. I'm a postdoc at Carnegie. Hi, I'm Danica Adams, and I'm a graduate student at Caltech. And we've been really lucky to be mentoring Luisa Tierney, who uh, did this study about how Mars reacts to a solar flare. The Maven mission has been orbiting Mars, and while it was in orbit, it observed a solar flare hit the atmosphere. Uh, and it found that when the solar flare hit the atmosphere, it increased the amount of hydrogen leaving the atmosphere, going away to space. Uh, when a flare hits the atmosphere, it will heat it up and cause it to expand, uh, but the amount that it would expand would not fully explain how much hydrogen left. Uh, so in our work, we find that the chemistry that the solar flare would kick off actually increases the hydrogen escape. Uh, here, the CO2 gets ionized, and that splits apart your H2 into 2H. And we get an increase in the H escape uh, and the H abundance in the upper atmosphere. And we're able to explain the H escape lots from beta. So that's really cool. We're, we're, we have a model that is grounded in reality and observations from spacecraft. We want to take it one step further and think about how this uh, has implications for planetary habitability in general. And so what we can do is we can take Mars without life the way it is today and uh, see how it responds to a solar flare. And then we can introduce a biosphere to Mars and see how that response to a solar flare differently. And using tools from information theory, we're able to tell how those different evolutions of Mars under that solar flare are, are, are different from one another, and we find that the introduction of a methanogenic biosphere actually makes Mars more resilient to a perturbation from a flare, uh, which means that planetary habitability is a function of its inhabitants. If your world is inhabited by a biosphere, it makes your world more resilient and homeostatic.